There's a way you can easily increase the effectiveness, the penetration, and performance of your arrow with very little downside. My dad taught me that if I was gonna shoot something, hunt something, you want to kill it. So to me, it's an ethical question. We're gonna compare apples to apples with 16 inch incredibly heavy shafts using the standard 100 point head. So we're then gonna test 150 grain, then a 200 grain. So we're gonna be able to test feet per second, momentum, energy at different ranges with the lab radar. We can test drop. Fire in the hole. You have to say that before you shoot anything. Of course. It's standard. Why wouldn't you? It's standard issue. Hey folks, for about the last 12 to 15,000 years, ancient man has been using big ass broadheads. They knew something that evidently us modern guys in the last 30 years have forgotten. And that means a bigger broadhead gives an arrow more FOC, uh, forward of center weight, and it also provides more energy and, and more momentum, so your penetration is better. And people are starting to figure this out on compound bows. There's a guy who has pretty much made his name on his YouTube channel, The Ranch Fairy, that has totally figured this out. And I'm not saying he's the only one. There are a lot of people, but still, the mass public doesn't seem to know this because the industry, bow companies, have dominated this, uh, this narrative because they got into speed wars back in around the mid-1990s. They started going, speed is everything, so a 100 grain broadhead became the standard. Well, that's all BS. There's a way you can easily increase the effectiveness, the penetration, and performance of your arrow with very little downsides. But who am I? I'm nobody, but I brought in some experts to actually prove this to you. You can see it on the range, but I wanna talk about the theory behind it. Folks, I've got the Ranch Ferry all the way from Austin, Texas came to share some of his theory and his data. And if you aren't enough, there, Mr. Troy, yep. this guy, Daryl, the Rocket Man. The Rocket Man, you, you hear some uh, Elton John playing in the background? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man. So this guy uh, creates ballistic missiles, created ballistic missiles for the US government. And I think it's a little bit of revenge of the nerds going on around here, but we, I mean, yeah. he looks normal. Yeah, we, he looks pretty normal. He looks normal, but his mathematical skills are, are much, much better than I. So he's going to be, Daryl's going to be on the lab radar looking at our numbers because this comes down to more than, ooh, that felt good. The ranch fair here has got compound bows covered. You've done everything. There's nothing I could really do We're different. still pushing, but yeah. We're but good. one thing that I haven't seen on your channel is crossbows. That's because I've never shot a crossbow. Do you have something against them? No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I honestly don't. I've just, I've never handled a crossbow. I don't know anything about them. And uh, so today I get to learn how to shoot a crossbow, maybe. If you'll let me. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna <laughs> let you here. That's ridiculous. It even tells you how level the gun is. Yeah. This is 10 points top of the line. This thing's about 3,500 bucks. This, of course, the scope is laser range finding scope that automatically compensates. Yeah. But this is about a, you know, round of $2,000 crossbow, give or take. But I've actually shot three inch groups at 100 yards with this crossbow. So, unlike a bow, a, a vertical bow, we can isolate where it's not gonna be any part of the shooter. Right, right, right. Same draw length every time, same pinpoint accuracy. So we're gonna be able to test feet per second, momentum, energy at different ranges with the lab radar, we can test drop. We're gonna compare apples to apples with 16 inch incredibly heavy shafts using the standard 100 point head that if you buy a crossbow, they lead you down this trail. That's the only thing they give you. 100 grain field tips, then you're supposed to use the 100 grain broadhead. But we're then gonna test 150 grain, then a 200 grain. So try, I'm gonna hand it over. What in theory should going up in weight do? Should it help us hurt us? What's happening here? So the first thing we're, we, we will see mathematically is we will see kinetic energy and momentum go up. There's no way to get past that. It's just a heavier thing flying down range. We've already done this with bows. We've doing some very deep tests with the rocket man on this. So what we're gonna see, what I expect to see at launch is kind of a boring kinetic energy line, but at 50 yards, we expect to see a increasing amount of KE or, and momentum. Okay. So that means delivered at the target, if you're going to shoot this thing 100 yards or something, it's just like the gun world, you want your projectile to penetrate and hit really hard 
by physics, not because of the theory. So we will see that. I have no doubt, and if I'm wrong, well, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but of we course. already know the math. Yeah. And then secondarily, I don't expect to see this dramatic drop. This thing is so, so fast. So that's, that's what people say the downside is. So we're seeing it with the higher FOCs, right, with the higher weights that we're really blowing through targets. Like Troy made a, a good point, especially with these higher velocities and these heavy field points. There's just a lot of momentum up at the front of the arrow and that momentum is going to carry you through the target. So we do expect more penetration in your target uh, because of the, the more weight. Especially out there. Yeah, especially out there. My first concern, honestly, with crossbows is can the broadheads you're sending down range handle a plan B hit? Right. Can, if you clip a shoulder or pound on a humerus and you pull it low, they walk five steps and your holdover didn't work. Will it handle impact? That's right. And some of the flimsy stuff you guys are shooting, I'm sorry. I don't know if it will. But here's one, you know, one thing that I've always said. If you're gonna increase the weight of your of your arrow and your FOC, why put that into a brass insert when you can add steel to your broadhead that does two jobs? Yeah, right. some of the stuff I shoot is 0.08 thick, it's hand yeah. sharp, a little high. Why well, that's steel. one of the advantages. It's you a large get, one. Yeah, so a couple things. One, um, you're saying, and we're fairly sure of this, we've just seen it too many times, that it's going to, if we hit the target, it's going to penetrate more. One thing that you said, though, that's interesting, if this thing is dropping like this and going forward, it's dropping and going forward, that is a worse penetrator than if it's if it's forward. Uh, exaggerated F for the camera. Yes, 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 FOC forward, exaggerated for the camera, but that is a better penetrating trajectory. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah, so the reason that is, is the uh, arrow shaft's in line with the momentum vector, if we want to get uh, engineering, go down that road. So basically what, what we're saying is the arrow shaft needs to be in line with the velocity vector as it comes into the target. And if it's not in line, that means you're going to set yourself up for uh, sidewall interaction with, a, with the penetrator, with the uh, arrow shaft. It'll and that's going to, yeah, it's going to lower the penetration. So historically people didn't like to see, you know, seeing a steep trajectory curve was almost a bad thing, you know, mm -hmm. in people's minds. One, range estimation is bigger, but now got we got this, yeah. Yeah. no big deal. Right. But technically you're saying an arrow at an angle is a better penetrator because it's following that broadhead. It's following that heavy exactly broadhead, right? It. It's That broadhead is really because of its momentum is pulling that arrow through the target. Right, and like yeah. this exaggerated, it's dropping as it's going forward. You yeah. have wasted energy. Well, usually down. that's also a sign of a low FOC arrow. And yes. a low FOC arrow is gonna have less stability than a high FOC arrow. That's, that's the nature of, of the stability. And so you have more, uh, you're susceptible to branches or, or wind or whatever at these long ranges if you're shooting a low FOC arrow, okay. and that's what you've got with, uh, with the lighter field points. One more question before we get to the FOC measurements. Accuracy. You know, we're talking about what happens terminally that a lot of people forget about, but people do have a point where they say if you don't hit the target, it doesn't matter. So accuracy is the first key, you it know, saying in the, in the tribe, then it's, then it's terminal, um, terminal performance, meaning right. if your arrow penetrates and does its job, penetrates and expands and cuts, all those things. What do you guess, what's your hypothesis on accuracy with this setup when we move up in weights? So I'm going to bail out and say we don't know what the arrow flight's going to be like. But assuming the arrow, let's say all the arrows fly the same. I think the high border center is going to be a, little, a lot more accurate because there's more mass in the front on the shaft down range. And the whole arrow's not flying. This is flying and it has a tail. That's what I think. Typically in testing these things, that's what I've seen, but I've only tested up to 125 grains. I haven't gone farther, so this is, I've, they've gotten quiet and a little bit more accurate. Here is your deer. You have got a broadhead on the front that's lifting. It's like my hand sitting out here, and it has fletching. If it comes in like this, it hits the deer, and how would it penetrate and not drop? And then you have a deploying mechanical broadhead, typically speaking from what I understand, that could open in any direction and it could go like that. And I have actually seen this on crossbow videos and I've seen it on my own stuff 
where the arrow actually hits and doesn't loop when the animals are moving. Here, so FOCs, on a vertical bow or what you've seen, what t uh, typically is an ideal, uh, a heavy FOC, but ideal in your in your studies and experience? Above 16 percent. Above 16, okay. We just measured this arrow. This arrow, and these are heavy, this is a 16 inch little bolt, you know, is what they call them. 16 inch bolt, and this is, this is heavy. So what was our calculation with the 100 uh, grain field point? They're all, they're 16.8 grains per inch, which is really heavy. 16.8 grains per inch without, right. without the broadhead. And, and a vertical bow, 10 or 12. Is okay, common. it's just heavy, which is good, right. because we want that And they're stiff, right. Okay. The mass really doesn't stiff. hurt. Right. The mass doesn't hurt. So, at 100 grains, this shaft is 418 grains and 7.3% forward to center, which is a pretty common forward to center for somebody shooting a 400 spine arrow and a 65 pound bow and 100 grain. 7% though, head. that is laughably low that is laughably for you. Low. 150 grain hit, same arrow, apples to apples. Uh, what's that FOC? That one's 468 and it's 11 and a half. 11 and a half FOC, then the 200 grain missile. We're at 518 grains and we're at 14.8. We're, we're starting to push up and that's a big jump. So Double. It, it, yeah, right. It, it is double. It doesn't sound like a lot, but to go from 7 to 14 is a really serious change. When you're working in the military, the tanks shoot back on the other guy's team. Right. They need to not shoot back. Right. They can't bounce off. Right. So they took the armor and said, this is how dense it is. Then they started backing up and said, what breaks the armor? And that's what we're gonna really test here is, at distance, who cares about that launch? Right. What breaks the armor? And then we got the targets at 57 yards. At distance, it's in the heavy air gonna catch up? It should be faster right. down, right? There should be less erosion of speed from muzzle and at, at, at 50 with the heavier air. We'll compare these results, talk about them, and then try to find a favorable, if the heavier broadheads work, then we'll try to find a favorable broadhead to use because if you pay this amount of money for a crossbow, you know, there, as they say, it's cliche, but there's only one thing that's actually touching the animal and parting your will on it, and that's the broadhead. That's the last thing, your broadhead or your bullet, that you should ever skimp on. One thing, Daryl, that's keeping us honest is this new lab radar, which that's right. this really kept the bullet companies honest because before they could put out some BS and you really couldn't test them. Now we know exactly the BC of a bullet based on its performance, but could you explain to people when we show the screen here what they're looking at sure. and what we can learn from it? Yeah, so I'll give you a, a little bit about Doppler radar. It is not activated by light it is activated by a radar wave that goes out and hits the projectile and then is detected when, when that uh, wave comes back. And so you could do this at night if you wanted to. It's really a game changer in the uh, study of trajectories from bows and arrows to uh, BB guns, right, and everything else. So uh, what we're going to do is that, I'll turn the screen around so that you can see it here, and then we'll get set up. But what we'll do is we've set the target from the muzzle to the target at 57 yards. But we've set the increments for the lab radar at 10 uh, yard increments going from the muzzle out to 50 yards. And so we'll be sure to collect all the data at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And we'll record the velocity degradation as we go down range. And from that, and knowing the mass of the projectile, we'll be able to calculate what the energy loss is as the arrow is flying down range. So not only do we, most people when they shoot a chronograph will only set up near the muzzle because they don't want to damage the chronograph down range. But with the lab radar, we set up at the muzzle and we get all of those velocities as just part of the technology. And that's why this is such a game changer. I'm, right. I'm really excited for using it. We've been using it. Uh, with Troy for, for months now, and I'm glad to see that, that you have one too and are doing your testing with the lab. Have radar. you seen old Betsy up there? She's got cobwebs on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of my uh, brother in law, I've got that, had that Oler 35, which is the standard for years. I bring sure. my brother in law out. One day he shoots it on his first shot, blows the screen. <laughs> This is more a measure of the bow and not so much the shooter. I think it's a very accurate test. Arrow number one, it's the 100 grain broad, uh, 100 grain field point. What's the mass weight? 418 at 7.3%. 57 yards, so you just put that dot on there. Wow, that's farther than I expected. 
150 grain field point. What's the numbers on the arrow weight? 468 and 11 and a half percent. 11 and a half, okay. All right, fire and hold. You have to say that before you shoot anything. Of course. It's standard. Why wouldn't you? It's standard issue. Much quieter. So 421, that uh, 50 grains took off uh, 21, 22 feet per second here at the muzzle. To me, it was notably uh, quieter, but I'm an idiot and forgot to do the, uh, the decimal meter, but we'll do it again. This is arrow number three, the 200 grain field point. Give us the numbers. 518, 14.8. 14.8 FOC. It was a lot quieter, that, uh, I thought so, it was 103. So our initial three arrows, of course this is Murphy's Law out here, and this is real world, I'm not sugarcoating anything. They, all three arrows whistled through the target. We lost two of them, so subsequent twist, test, it's gonna be even more accurate <laughs> because I'm gonna have to shoot just one arrow. But we can do that later to measure the drop in accuracy. You're over here cackling. I know. I, have, I haven't seen the, the data. I wanted no. to be surprised, so lay it on us. Okay, so for the first test with the 418 grain arrow, your KE, 182. 182. And you know, typically when I test these things, anything 140, 50 is good. That's because this is 440 feet per second. Yeah. And it was confirmed. Yeah. Now, but you dropped down to 148 when uh, we got out to 50 yards. Okay, that was with the 100 grainer. 150 yeah. grainer. Yeah, 150 grainer, the mass was 468. The uh, kinetic energy at the muzzle was 184, very close, right? We're saying these yep. are all about the same at the right. muzzle. 184.2 at 50 is 159. 159 versus 148. Okay. Okay, and then for the 518 grain? That's the arrow. that's the 200 grain broadhead. Yep, that's right. And the FOC was 14.8 on that. Okay. Okay, and the KE was 184.9 at the muzzle. That, that's identical. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, that's it's constant. Muzzle. It's what we expected. Yeah. yeah. And then at 50, it's 164.3. 16 extra foot pounds. Yeah. I've grown up with, with rifles and all. I know what energy. Uh, you know, means, but it's hard for me to equate momentum to anything. Yeah. Can you tell us about momentum and what the hell that means? Well, so here's the way that uh, I like to think of it. So kinetic energy really measures uh, uh, things in flight, things in motion, right? So you have a have what's a work term, that's the, what it took, the force times the distance that it took to get that kinetic energy and then it's a, a measure of the mass times the velocity squared divided by two. Okay, when you get to the target, I feel like that the momentum is the key driver in uh, con continuing penetration. Okay. So the mass times the velocity. Think of it like this, if I had a feather and I had a golf ball and they both had the same kinetic energy, the feather is going infinitely fast. It's going much faster, right? I would much better, rather be hit by that feather with the same kinetic energy as the uh, golf ball, right? Yep. But now, let's, let's do the momentum numbers. The momentum number of that golf ball is out, off the, you know, out of the roof. It has momentum, it, it will carry that mass and do damage yep. to me, right. right? Even though the kinetic energy is the same, there's no way the momentum of those two objects is the gotcha. same. And that, to me, that tells you that momentum is the key driver of the effect on okay. target. Right. So the kinetic energy gets you down to the target. The momentum is get you through. Get you through the target. So right now there is no disadvantage of using a heavier head. It's what was the velocity at the muzzle? Oh, that's a great question. The 100 grain head was 443. 443, which is 440s, three above what 10 point says. 443. Yeah. 150. The 150 head was 421. 421. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, 200 grain head was 401. Okay, 401. So this is why the manufacturers don't do that because they're in a speed war. They even have the speed on the side there. That's how important it is. And when Raven or whoever comes out with the um, with the 440, the next company's got to have the 445. 
but if you're not so worried about speed, which you shouldn't be, you get so many advantages. But there could be a downside. We just have to go see, I gotta shoot these multiple times and see if accuracy suffers. If accuracy suffers, you'll have something to think about. If accuracy doesn't suffer or gets better, it's just a no-brainer. Let's shoot one more time, look at the drop, and then look at accuracy, see what it does. Okay, sounds that good. Sounds good. Shot three, 200 grams. This is never before, for me, this is never uh, seen before data that I got that with a crossbow that's going 440, you know, 443, shooting up to a 200 grain point and seeing that energy. For me, when you look at this, there was no degradation of accuracy. As a matter of fact, incredibly, this is tough to read here, it's hieroglyphics, but incredibly, this uh, 100 grain group is an inch and seven eighths at 57 yards. The 150 grain point was an inch and seven eighths at 57 yards. And the 200 grain was an inch and seven eighths at 57 yards, which in itself is incredible. I mean, like, what are the odds of that? You did have more drop. You had six, uh, about six and a half inches of drop from the 200 grainer compared to the, uh, to the 100 grainer, but I can compensate. That's what scopes are for. You know, and, and even this scope, you don't have to worry about the trajectory because it does it for you. So that's of no consequence to me. Um, what is consequential are the numbers. There is no comparison. The, the, the more energy, the more kinetic energy, and there's no comparison how much more momentum. Yeah, more has. momentum you too. Just quickly yeah. over the results. The surprising thing was is the momentum and the momentum at the muzzle for the 100 grain uh, field point was 0.822, but the momentum at 50 yards downrange for the 200 uh, uh, grain field point was 0.869. So it was actually more momentum uh, downrange for the 200 grain point than at the muzzle for the 100 grain point. Yeah, that's really surprising. But Troy, what I want you know, you're hunted in Texas, and you've, your specialty has been pigs, the ultimate testing medium. Yeah, absolutely. I did a uh, the, the bull shooters video on Brutus. You can see it right down there if you want to. But what does this equate? Those are huge number differences. We've seen on paper what it does, but tell me what you believe your knowledge that uh, would equate to in terms of of killing animals. Well, clearly the math shows at impact at 50 yards, you're gonna have you have more energy with the heavier arrow. It's more impact energy. It's really basically that simple. And there's no other story. We didn't lose accuracy. More pass-throughs though? I, I, yeah, no, once again, I said this earlier on, you're, you just increase your energy. You better put a real broadhead on the front of that right. thing. I mean, right. I would. Yeah. I would put something that doesn't move around and doesn't have a potential to break. And my biggest concern, and what I think I've seen outcome-based, and we're gonna start studying this when we get some pigs on the ground, I think the blades erode on impact. This thing's ridiculous. Yes. See. So we really have to start thinking, will the broadhead survive? And one of the things I'm pretty convinced about is when I lost pigs and I got a half an arrow in them, that the broadheads were dull. I think the mud ate them. I mean, if you get a big bowed up pig and he's that thick, you know, you gotta penetrate right. six inches of him and the broadhead is not sharp. It hits sharp, except all the work it's doing and you're talking about the energy on this right. thing. Oh! The point is, you need a sturdier broadhead if you're talking about this much. I think so, Detroit. yeah. Why, why is, are you so passionate about this? Why do you care whatever anybody else shoots? Because I saw what happened with me. And what I happened? I took my recovery rates up to... Now, it's shot placement. Yeah. Everybody talks about it, it's all shot placement. Yeah. Well, they jump, they move, they spin, they roll out of the way. Right. Things happen. You're, you're, you're a human. Yeah, get it. I wish I had my... Get your tennis racket. Oh! Um, so, we're humans, we make mistakes. Yep. Now, when the arrow goes where it's supposed to, I got it. And in the old days, it was, that's a pretty good shot. I hope I find You know, I was brought up, uh, my dad, you know, taught me that if I was gonna shoot something, hunt something, you want to kill it. So to me, it's an ethical question. That's the only reason. I've got no, I've got no dog in this fight. I'm not selling products or whatever. Right, right. I don't care and I'm not the hunting police here. I'm just saying from what I've seen, there is no downside to this, to using a, a heavy arrow. And that's exactly why I'm going to use 
heavier broadheads with my crossbows. Yeah. It, to me, it's as simple as that. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I Unfortunately, you're going to lose some arrows. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, thanks for your help, guys. You I bet. really learned a lot every time I get together with that. Yeah, uh, it's fun. You know, I was an athlete. I was a star athlete when I was coming up, so I really didn't hang around the nerds much. You know? <laughs> yeah, you've got to be cool. And so it's neat Look for, at this for me to... Torso yeah. right here. <laughs> thanks, guys. Very yeah. interesting.